This video will describe how to use TopDoc NextGen's PLC configuration editors. When you first load TopDoc NextGen, the login screen will appear and we'll just say OK. And then we're going to close this link to the blog and we're going to select the PLC option. Now the PLC option provides all the tools to work with the PLC when you're connected. So that will be online editing, upload, download, as well as the configuration. So when you first install TopDog NextGen, one default PLC is created. And when you click on the name of that, the actual PLC configuration menu will appear, as well as this graphic. Because SoftPLC is so flexible in that it can handle multiple communication drivers, loadable functions, communication ports, etc., there are a number of configuration steps. And this graphic will describe kind of how the files are created and managed. So if you think of the local part of this graphic as your hard drive on your top dock computer, and the remote as your soft PLC, whatever type of controller you have, uh, that's going to refer to the flash disk in the soft PLC. And the editor in the center here is what we're looking at. So when I do a save in the editor, You'll notice at the bottom there's a local and a remote section. When I do local save, it's going to copy the information that I'm seeing on the editor screen to the hard drive. If I want to retrieve what I've saved on my hard drive, I use the load function. Now if I want to actually put this information or get the information from the PLC, then I'm going to use the remote options. So send will take what I'm seeing in the editor and copy it to the soft PLC controller in the appropriate location. If I want to actually see what's in the controller, then I do a fetch. So it's a good practice whenever you're connected to a soft PLC to be sure that what you're looking at in the editor is what the soft PLC is actually using uh, in its runtime process is to do a fetch. So the first thing we want to look at is the define tab. This Define tab is unique in that it is only stored on the hard drive. It is never saved to the remote soft PLC. So you'll see that those options are grayed out. And this is just some overview information. You can describe your PLC. You can talk about the status, uh, any maintenance you've done, whatever kind of notes you want to put. But what's important here are a couple things. One is the type of soft PLC, the family. And this is important in that we use different defaults in the other configuration editors based on the type of PLC you select. And for purposes of this video, we're using a smart. And the other thing that's uh, important is this software version. And this needs to match because again, sometimes the configuration file names and or locations may be different. And again, for purposes of the video, we're running version four. And so when we've made our changes, then we would do a save and continue on. Now the rest of the tabs have to do with the actual information. And we're going to take a detour here. I'm actually going to connect to my soft PLC and work with that instead of the default. So I'm going to do a detect on net, which is like a who function. Show me all the soft PLCs that are on my network. And I have one, and so I'm going to save selected. And when I close this window, now I have that PLC added to my definitions. And when I click on the network tab, you'll see that I have a line here that defines the IP address and the subnet mask that will be used to communicate to this soft PLC. You can change this to match your network. And again, like if I were to change this to uh, four, and then I send it, then the soft PLC would have that new address. Whenever I make any changes to configuration information and I send it to the soft PLC, in order for it to take effect, I have to restart or reboot the soft PLC. So if I were to send this right now, And it tells me that I need to reboot it. But I'm going to go ahead and change it back. 
so that I can continue to communicate. And now when I do a fetch, you'll see that it's still 106. So the next tab I want to talk about is ONE, which stands for Optimum Network Executive, which is how we communicate to the soft PLC as if it were an Allen Bradley PLC. So there's a number of communication drivers in this category. The server channel is always defined. It needs to be defined as this is how TopDoc NextGen talks to the soft PLC on Ethernet. And so we're going to leave that alone. There is no configuration on the server channel. It just needs to be there. So let's look at the other kind of channels I can add. So if I select Add, I can add a client channel. A client channel is a Ethernet channel, and it allows me to do peer-to-peer -peer messaging to Allen Bradley PLCs like a PLC5 or a SLC505 or to uh, another soft PLC. So all I need to do in here is to put the IP address of the other system. And it obviously needs to be on the same subnet. I can also add a DF1 channel. This would be a serial channel to an HMI or to another PLC, for example. And I would select which COM port on my soft PLC, my smart. I'm going to use COM4. And then the baud rate, etc., other similar serial settings. And again, those need to match your other device. And the third type of channel I can add is Data Highway Plus. And the KTX is for systems that have a obsolete KTX card installed. That would be the 1784 Allen Bradley PKTX or KTX card. The SST DH Plus, this would be the 5136 SD, again, an obsolete product. And the Smart Data Highway Plus is the internal Data Highway Plus interface in the Smart Soft PLC. And when I select that, I need to give it a station number on the Data Highway, and whether it's COM5 or COM6, because Soft PLC supports two Data Highway channels, uh, whether the termination resistors are going to be used, and the baud rate of the network. And if I were to send this now, all those channels would be configured in the soft PLC when I restart it. But I'm not going to do that, so I'm just going to go to the next tab, which is the startup tab. Say yes, I want to abort. And I'm in the startup. And this, you generally won't change most anything in here except the name of the application. If I go back to the default soft PLC for a moment, you'll see that the app name, application name, is default. This is a blank ladder program that we include with new soft PLCs and gateways. So the name of the program you actually want to run is going to need to be put into this field. Now the soft PLC itself, if I go back to my PLC, I'm running an app called, well let's check, let's do a fetch. I'm running an app called Web Demo. So you'll see these three dots here. If I click on that, you'll see that I have a number of applications actually in my soft PLC. So when you first download a new application that you've created into the soft PLC, you're going to need to come back into this startup tab and select that as the app you want to run as opposed to default. And after I've selected the app, then I would send it, and that sends the startup configuration to the soft PLC, and when I restart, then I will be running that new program. The module tab is the last one we haven't looked at, and the module tab is where you define the IO drivers and custom instructions that you want your soft PLC to use. And so you'll see in my soft PLC, I'm using a driver called Smart, and this is for our Tealware IO. And I have two modules which are loadable functions. One is for data logging, and another is the SLC 500 instruction set uh, added to the base instruction set. And so I'm using those in my soft PLC. If, for example, I wanted to add another one, let's say I want to do Ethernet IP communications, I would 
check it as being something I want to use and then I would send it to the soft PLC. You'll see this configure button is on which means that there's some kind of configuration needed for this driver. And so I would click on configure and it's going to load another window and again I have load, save, fetch, and send. So I'm going to fetch from the soft PLC and it's going to bring up the template Ethernet IP configuration file which is called etherip.lst and at the beginning I've got a bunch of comments that tell me how this file is laid out and what the different parts mean etc and when I get down to the bottom it'll say end of intro comments and then there's the actual information that I need to configure for using this driver and so I would put in, for example, and this, this driver requires um, the number of elements and the tag name that that group of elements will start at uh, for the different types of data. Each driver has different type information that you need to enter, and those are all described in a document for that particular driver. So I'm going to, uh, let's say if I, if I change this to 8, and then I would do a send. Now I've configured the Ethernet IP driver and I could use it. So I'm going to uncheck that because I didn't actually configure it. I'm going to send it and now that driver won't be used. But another example might be I could go to the Modbus IP master. If I wanted to do Modbus communications to some type of uh, device or I.O and I would go to configure. And in this case, it's gonna pop up a nice editor, which is an, creates an XML file, which is how we talk to the Modbus devices. And so up here, it has some information about where the data is gonna go in my soft PLC. And when I add, I can add, for example, a TCP server, and I'm gonna give it an IP address, I'll change this over here. Configure my slave. So I'm going to pick read, write, registers. And then I would put in the Modbus address that I want to start at, where that's going to go in the soft PLC, and how many words uh, for both the read and the write information and I just fill out this form and when I'm done I would do a send and I might want to save it locally as well. So once I've configured each one of these sections and I've sent them to the soft PLC I can restart the soft PLC and then I'm configured. So a couple other functions in here, um, we've got the detect on net, which we looked at. Upload is going to transfer the running logic in the soft PLC to your hard drive. So if I do an upload, and I can name it whatever I want, I'm going to call it new, and then I would do an upload, and it would get what's in the RAM including any changes I've made, and copy it to my hard drive. If I want to download, that means I'm going to transfer it from my hard drive to the flash on the soft PLC. Say I wanted to do one called T1, and I want to download it. tells me I'm done. Reminds me I need to change the startup list. So I go to the startup list and if I go over here you'll see T1. I can say I want to run T1. I would do a send and then when I restart the soft PLC it will run that application instead of the one that I'm currently running which is called web demo. So as long as you download to the same name, 
you don't ever have to change the startup.lst. But if you want to run a different application or you want to keep the old version and, and download the new one with a new name, you can do that. You just need to go in here to change it because you're copying it to the flash, not to the RAM. And edit remotely is my editing. And that takes me into the editor, which is covered in another video. I want to thank you for spending this time with us. And if you have any questions, you can always contact support at softlessc.com or refer to the help file.